All right, hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. We've got another community roundup video today. I'm about to enter a development phase where we're gonna do some sprints on some different products and projects. So I thought I'd get this video done and out of the way before that starts. But we'll talk a bit more about that soon. So you know how these videos go. I'm gonna show you a bunch of tutorials and projects and stuff and say what I like about them. And hopefully that'll give you something to do for like the next week or so. So yeah, grab a drink, grab a notepad and let's get into it. So first of all, friend of the channel Kev, otherwise known as Kev Binge, who used to be called Blender Binge, has been back at it again with another Star Wars inspired 3D scene. This one is about creating the Sarlacc from Star Wars. So just to show you, the, the Sarlacc is like this kind of weird, wormy underground creature that kind of sucks in and digests all sorts of stuff, namely like main characters from the series, but not really, spoilers. Anyway, so this tutorial is quite interesting because it's using a combination of both Blender and Houdini. So Kev knows quite a bit about Houdini. He likes using it for doing these kinds of simulations in in this case, it's actually the sand falling into the Sarlacc. But thanks to the new kind of point rendering system that was introduced in Blender with geometry nodes in Cycle specifically, we can render out these kinds of volumey like simulations made up of just millions and millions of points. And essentially they have like infinitesimal detail. So it's really, really interesting. So the video is under 10 minutes long, so it's quite digestible. That's a bit of a Sarlacc joke for you there. And he goes over a variety of tips and techniques. So I've made a few notes here of things which I want to point out. So first of all, in geometry nodes, for getting all of the teeth for the Sarlacc. He shows you how to create a circular array using curved circles or mesh circles. Now circular arrays are quite important because I think they'll be super useful for doing like hard surface types of artwork as well. But as well as this, he also shows you how to essentially grab the normal data and do some vector math to it to align all of the instances, so the teeth in this case, in a way which makes sense and you can get finite control over them as well. He also shows you how to rig a tentacle object. So this is done using an armature and then using hook objects to control Control it using a curve and this will also include constraining it with a spline ik to be able to get it to move appropriately and then he adds that to the scene and then kind of sets it up using those hook objects so if you're interested in kind of animating tentacly things then that's a cool technique to look at but surprisingly in this list of tutorials which i'm going to show you there's actually more content for doing tentacle like stuff and we've also recommended tentacle like videos from kamurai before there's something about this community and tentacles which i haven't quite figured out yet but they seem to be everywhere anyway another quite valuable tip which he talks about is blending different materials together using a mix node and kind of paint masks. So you can see here through all of this noise that the compression is just killing, uh, that the sand here and the Sarlacc kind of gum-like meaty texture has this kind of harsh cutoff and that's a bit unfortunate for the artwork. So what he does here is he takes like this kind of paint mask and he's basically painting on and the shader which he's composed is helping to blend stuff together. And you can essentially see that here. So that's about the five minute 45 mark. You can learn about that technique. It'll also take you through the process of baking the sand simulation so taking like this base mesh of the cone of sand going down towards the sarlacc and then how to get the sand falling in onto that and then bring it back into blender so overall it's quite a cool one and i have to recommend kev's other videos as well and then there's also the more sizely one and the stags from ready player one which i have kind of recommended before so thank you kev oh he's also just past 100,000 subs so well done glad you finally got there so if that didn't satisfy your tentacle fix then as i alluded to there's some more content here let's take a look What's this blurry thing? What's coming out of the focus? It's a, it's a snake. Yes, it's a snake tutorial by Pierrick, who again, we've recommended they're like the key person to go to for animation based tutorials now. And they've done one about matching a snake to the ground and kind of rigging it and animating it. So there are a few things to keep in mind for this tutorial. He shows you how to create a basic snake rig using bendy bones, I believe. There you go. So you can control like the different segments of the armature to kind of get the snake bending properly. The snake, by the way, can be picked up from Sketchfab. And I believe he shows you that as well. So he goes through the animation process, how to get it looking right, how to kind of match things to the ground, and he's using the shrink wrap constraint for that. So that'll basically help you project control objects onto the surface of the ground. And then he takes you through the final animation. So it's quite an interesting one. If you want to do like snake-like things, then that's a good one to watch. Again, for Pierre, I have to recommend his Alive animation course, which I did a whole video about a while back. And I keep recommending because it's the highest quality source for animation content in Blender. So if you're interested in taking a look at that, then I will leave my affiliate link down below. And again, the weird thing is that coming to the end of this video, even Pierre has an advanced rigging tentacles video. Let's take a look at that advanced tentacles rig 17th of may 2022 i don't know what's going on with this community i'm as confused as you are all right let's move on to something that's not tentacle related ben save us ben he's done an iron man nanotech effect video this one's super popular it's his first video to pass over 100,000 views by the way so well done ben but of course this one was going to be quite popular people love to see how the kinds of visual effects they see in their favorite movies can be made but this one's actually not a geometry nodes effect so finally because i think there's a huge amount of geometry nodes content people might be getting a bit bored of it i've got some more of those to recommend 
mind anyway. But you can always rely on bent to make some really high quality effects like this. So it's about having this kind of liquefied nanotech effect, which you can see growing over the surface. And this is controlled via the proximity of a control object as well. So you can see that here where he's got this control object and you can take the texture coordinates of this object and use that to control the influence of the effect in the shader nodes. So that's basically the main technique you're going to be learning in this video. But then of course you need to disrupt it with generated textures. So again, you can see that happening here. Combining this with bump information to make it look a bit more like there's some three dimensional disturbance happening around the border of the effect. And Ben has a really good eye for getting these effects to look nice. Then there's also an element of discoloration, which is going to show you how to do. So I think it just kind of adds to that disillusion of the surface. And in the end, we end up with a nice cool result. So I think this will be a nice one to try on different meshes. Again, if you want to learn more about some shader tricks, then that's a really good video to watch. So thank you very much, Ben, for saving us from the tentacles. OK, so this next one is a nice theory based video from Agniv Render Rides about the skills you need to learn as an environment artist. So there are a few actually key points of information which I want to share with you here. So this general video is about the importance of world building when making environment artwork content. This will apply to whether you're doing kind of real world photorealistic environments or just stylized artworks. There are general elements of theory which apply to all of these different styles. So in this video he talks about splitting the image into a foreground and a background and kind of blocking out basic shapes beforehand. This will help you get a balance in your artwork. He also emphasizes the importance of recycling your old artwork as well. So like your general models and stuff and that's something I've talked about in my videos as well. It's also one of the important important reasons as to why I make content and resource packages. He outlined some key questions about what to keep in mind when making environment art. So namely things like what kinds of people live in this world? How do they survive in this world? These are questions which help ground it in reality and they're quite easy to forget about if you're just going for something which looks nice visually. So what makes an environment lived in? And this is all about relating things to the real world as well. So even if you're doing stylized artwork, Agniv tells you about how it's important to collect material references from the real world because it will help to inform you in your direction. There's more stuff from Agniv in this video as well, but I just felt want to share it and I think it's definitely worth some extra views as well. So thanks for sharing Agniv. I like these theory videos. I would love to do more theory videos but they don't tend to perform too well on YouTube which is why I have my second channel. Okay, now we're going to move away from tutorials and onto a Blender project. So coming from David Cascati, which I probably pronounced that wrong. Statistically speaking, I will pronounce most new names wrong when I mention them on a YouTube video. So just let me know. But here we go. So this is a vector displacement project of turning a kind of hemispherical shape into an actual car, which is freaking crazy. If you don't know how stuff like this works, it's basically you're taking a primitive and then using the shader and adaptive subdivision and vector math, you're kind of knocking it into a more complex shape. And we've seen really cool results like this in like the node vember challenge which should be happening again this year but i mean cars are hard enough to model by themselves anyway just using traditional techniques so this is really really impressive interesting thing is you can also grab the file on gumroad as well so if you don't believe it's real you can go and take a look for yourself and it's free look but they have other things as well so they've got like a pineapple generator for geometry nodes if you wanted to take a look at that and that's one thing i love about this community there are so many learning resources if you want to dissect these projects and just see how they're made for yourself like spider web generator free, Geonodes Mushroom free. Dude, you should probably charge a little bit for these. But who am I to talk? People have been telling me to charge for Biogen for ages and I haven't. Giving stuff away for free is a really good way to build up a following. So anyway, yeah, I just thought I'd share their content because it seems to be quite valuable. Next up from Sebs, we have a Miles Morales rig. So obviously Miles is the black Spider-Man. Really, really cool character. If you've seen the Spider-Verse film, which I highly recommend, Miles is a character in that. It's just, it's one of the best animated films I've ever seen. Anyway, they've done this rig for Miles and you can actually go and pick it up on Gumroad again for free. Amazing content. So it has an IK, FK limb switching, a snapping custom UI, IK fingers, custom pivot controls, animatable eyes. So if you want to see how to rig a Spider-Man like character, here you go. And they've done this really cute thing where they got like the Spider-Man logo kind of in the rig there at the top. So thanks for sharing that, Sebs. That's really, really cool. I'm sure people will love it. And you can take a look at their other stuff on Gumroad as well. All right, so next up, we have some tutorials by someone who I get mistaken for a fair bit sometimes because their name is Chris. Chris Bailey Film. <laughs> for some reason, people have trouble distinguishing Curtis from Chris. I think they just see the C and the S and they get really confused. Anyway, Chris has done some really cool content here. One I want to point out is this Geometry Nodes Procedural Creators Blender tutorial and also the, get ready to listen to me pronounce this wrong, Phylotaxis Spirals with geometry nodes. There's also self-modeling space station video, animate cameras like Pixar. There's some lighting like stuff as well. Turn edges into wire bundles. That's cool. Anyway, so there's lots of really cool content here for learning geometry nodes. Let's take a look at what you can learn here. So in this tutorial, he first starts off by kind of setting up the camera, talking a bit about composition and camera settings and stuff like that. And then before actually using geometry nodes, he's using the basic modify stack to set up a general base for the mesh. Once he's happy with his general base procedural object, he then goes into some information about getting the lighting right for a space scene like this. So that involves getting a bit of a star filled background there as well. 
Then he adds a bit of volumetric lighting just for general effect to get some nice lighting coming off from the side. Then he goes into some shader detail about creating a procedural rock surface. So this is about combining, you know, generated textures and masks and stuff and combining that with bump information to get a nice surface for the asteroid. And then he goes into using geometry nodes to take this further. So this is an interesting example of how to enhance your artwork with geometry nodes to, in this case, create some procedural craters, which are going to be inset into the asteroids. So he does some experimenting with this until he gets the result, which he thinks is nice and then basically he'll finish off the scene. So if you're interested in kind of space-like artwork, then that's quite a cool one. Like I said, there's some other interesting ones here, like the kind of auto modeling with geometry nodes. So that goes more into like the procedural slash parametric design field, which I'm quite interested in, of course. But also this one, I think I could learn quite a bit from the Phylotaxis spirals because it's all about alien type plant life. And that's something I really want to study more about in the future. Oh, look here, a bit of Python. That's great for us. I've really wanted to do a few more Python like tutorials, but I'm not sure how much they're in demand or how they'll be received. So let me know if you want to see any kind of Python slash RT tutorials in the future. Anyway, up next is a really important resource. So from the lovely Simon Thomas, we have the Geometry Nodes from Scratch course. It's quite a small course. It's on the Blender Studio. It's about bringing yourself up to speed with Geometry Nodes from someone that actually works with the Blender team. A lot of people may know Simon as being the undisputed god of nodes for doing some of the most amazing stuff during the November challenge but they now work with the team and oh look at their little face so the course is split into four main modules and files now i will say that because this is on the blender studio technically it requires a subscription to access but there is still some stuff you can access for free so for example the basics theory this video is free so you can click on that and watch that through if you've got an account you can comment on these videos as well and then also there are some files available at the end which you can download for free like how to make like a kind of doodle cloud generator so if you draw using the i think it's either the grease pencil or curves or something like that you can kind of generate generate volumetric clouds from that. There's also a spaceship generator, array tools. Again, calling back to Kev's video about doing the kind of circular array, that's gonna be very handy. And then there are some kind of premium files here, which you can access if you have the Blender Studio subscription. So the different modules are the basics. So you have the theory and then a rock generator example. Then we have data structures. This is where we to get like more complex scattering. Then we have fields, which is like a core principle behind geometry nodes. You might remember that geometry nodes move from an attribute system to a fields based system. It kind of makes it a bit more like the shader editor, but they're kind of different flows of data to keep in mind, but it is quite a cool system. So Simon Thomas will explain it very well here. And then there's the attribute propagation section. So this is for the more complex management of variables and data associated with different objects and how to create them, how to access them and how to create more complex systems using this. So coming straight from the Blender team, this is a really nice resource. So talking more about geometry nodes, Camerai, who we have recommended in a somewhat recent Blender projects video, has an interesting method of trying to teach people geo nodes, and it's through the use of puzzles. So the idea behind this is if you go to the Gumroad, there are a collection of blend files, which are essentially puzzles, which you need to complete. And in completing them, it will teach you how the geometry nodes works together. So if you want to learn more about this kind of project, then again, you can head over to their channel, Camerai, and kind of listen to them explain how it works. So you have all the building blocks here to kind of make the final result. I think that's a really interesting idea. I've never really thought about adding a gamification element to the learning process like that, but maybe that will help some people who might otherwise find regular tutorials a bit boring. So I thought that was worth sharing with you. Now moving on from the channel Born CG, who does a variety of content relating to Blender and Godot especially. So if you're interested in kind of like independent game development and design, this is a cool channel to follow, but they've done a nice video here called Let's Learn Blender Top 10 Essential Camera Tips. This is more of a beginner focus to it, but I thought it was quite a nicely condensed one. But you can see the general things that go over here. So what are camera objects, how to view things through the camera, there's moving, kind of locking the camera to view, rotating it on a kind of pivot as well, camera size and aspect ratio, how to manage multiple cameras, how to put overlays on them, how to manage the clipping distances, the focal length, perspective versus orthographic projections, and then also how to use constraints for the cameras. I will also share with you, I figured out something recently as well. When trying to make thumbnails for videos, sometimes I like to have a pretty render, which is kind of composed nicely on the thumbnail. And I never considered doing this, but it worked really well. If you take like a a transparent version of your thumbnail without the render you can put it into blender as like a background image and lock it to the camera and then you can preview how your render is going to look in relation to the thumbnail overlay and when i figured that out i was like duh of course that makes sense why didn't i ever think about that beforehand okay so the last video i want to recommend comes from left brain cg art a fairly small channel so let's see if we can help them get a bit more attention it's create your first isometric scene comfy and cozy bedroom beginner friendly step-by-step -step tutorial and what i like about this one is that even though it's very beginner friendly there's still a lot that i think intermediate to advanced users can learn from this because again even though it's simplistic 
it's beautiful. I think there's a lot people could learn about balance and how less can definitely be more in a lot of cases for making visually pleasing artworks. It's over half an hour long and I think it's a fantastic video and I think that's represented by the fact that it's actually done quite well. It's definitely going to pass over 100,000 views sometime soon. So the chapters are marked quite simplistically for the room, the bed and I really love this here like they're showing you the result in the corner as you're making it. That's a really nice touch. Then we do the window, the wardrobe, the nightstand, the hexagon wall art and then they go through the visual style of this so they talk about normals, lights, materials etc. How to denoise it before they finally get to the render and you end up with a beautiful result. So again just like the donut tutorial from Blender Guru or the lovely apple scene tutorial from CG Boost. I think this is another one of those really nicely composed videos for beginners which gives them something very visual which they can easily customize and personalize the room however they like to then show their friends when they're done. So I thought this was a nice one. I think it's going to do quite well. I think there are going to be a lot of beginners which really appreciate this video. So I thought I just want to put it on record and share it with you guys. And taking a look at their channel, that's not the only video they've done as well. So it'll be worth checking out their other content. But anyway, before we close this up, I want to tell you about a new tool I just made. So recently, my friend Charon from Just 3D Things kind of begged me, for lack of a better term, sorry, Charon, to make him a tool which helps him auto sync the properties of a node group in a material to their default values. All right. So because a lot of the time when you're making materials, you're adjusting values to get the perfect default look that you want people to see as soon as they apply it to their own work. But then to make those values the defaults, you have to then go into the node group and then assign them manually. And it's a bit annoying. So I made him a script where if he selects all the node groups he wants, the script will look through each of those node groups, take all the values he's assigned and then make those the defaults. And if you want to get your hands on that tool, it's available on my Patreon. <laughs> Um, so yeah, there's a bunch of stuff you can get by signing up to my Patreon. You can get your name put permanently on this Hall of Patrons artwork. It's our continuous evolving art project and your name will be kept on there permanently. You can get access to some experimental files. I'm going to be putting more of those up over time. And recently, as I kind of alluded at the beginning of this video, I'm going to be doing more of a focus on product work in the coming months. And I've also gotten some people to start helping me with work. So this is a first for me. I might talk about that a bit more in the future. It's been a bit tricky kind of setting up a delegation space to kind of get people on board. And I don't have a lot of money to pay them but you know we're all friends and they're quite eager so we're gonna see how it goes and of course you can check out my products on my gumroad my blender market my website store there's a bunch of material stuff on there for you experimental parametric modeling stuff from the biogen add-on and the content packs but i think people find the material packs the most useful especially the modular metals one that's like the most highest quality package i've ever made i think but anyway if you're interested in connecting with the community more you can come and join our discord server as well i'll leave a link to that below and you can find all of our links on curtisholder.online slash links so thanks for watching everyone hopefully that's given you some interesting stuff to check out and if you made it this far the emoji for this video is going to be a heart just a lovely heart as a thank you to the community so if you put that in the comments i'll be able to see who made it this far through the video oh yeah we also enabled the super thanks on this channel as well so if you want to give that a try maybe you could so yeah have a fantastic day everyone enjoy the content and i will see you next time